So I have two things to tell you. The first thing I have to tell you is that I just had a quick vision when I sat here now. And what I saw was the spiritual framework of this territory. The spiritual framework of this territory. And there is a vicious demonic entity that is rooted into this vicinity. And that vicious entity will want to contend with you. Now, the counsel that I bring is that it's a season of warfare. The ministry has a lot of potential in this vicinity. And the ministry has the capacity to experience a breaking fall here. But it has not been conventional. So I just want you to be aware of uh, the fact that uh, it's a season of warfare. I don't know if you if you came here newly into this this vicinity. It's a season of warfare. And if you don't engage it, if you don't engage it, the intention of the devil is to throw your efforts into confusion. If you engage it, it is going to occasion um, the realization of the potential of your calling in this vicinity. So let's turn to the book of Psalms. Psalms 1. Psalms 1. It's a season of warfare. It's a season of warfare. Part of the reason why God brought you into the neighborhood is to occasion that warfare. Because he has given you capacity, experience, and depth. He put you in a context where he was able to wire you, your mentality after the other warfare. So he brought you here because most of our other brethren that are running things here seem not to have the capacity to effectively deal with the satanic rebellion that has infested the location. I speak in parables. Um, some He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord his Lord, and in his law, Doth he meditate day and night? He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, because it's a Sunday morning, and uh, in a Sunday morning we are not necessarily supposed to hold people down for too long. We look at verse 1. Verse 1 will be our emphasis. And if you notice, if you notice, you will discover that in verse 1, a blessed man has three possible orientations. We have the orientation of sitting, we have the orientation of standing, and the orientation of walking. These are the three postures that a blessed man sustains. Now, I would like us to build on that and really understand the sitting position of a blessed man. That verse you are seeing there, Psalms 1 verse 1, is a summary of the entire book of Ephesians. Summary of the entire book. And I'd like us to do a little Bible study. And maybe we can achieve the understanding of sitting. 
city this morning. And that will be enough. So turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Please don't forget that a blessed man has three postures. He has what? A sitting posture. He has a standing posture. And he has a walking posture. You will notice that in the natural, a little baby will sit first before the baby stands and eventually the baby will begin to walk. But in the supernatural, you will sit first, you will walk before you can stand. Turn your Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 1 quickly. We see one of those scenarios where we can tap into uh, the prayer substance of Apostle Paul. Now, one of the measures, one of the avenues by which we can measure uh, the maturity of a believer is to hack into the prayer content of that believer. If we see what you are communicating in your private moment of intercourse with God, it will suggest uh, your level of growth, maturity in the things of God. So we need to peep into Apostle Paul's prayer life. This is part of the product that came from his interface with God. And he was praying for the efficient church and he said, okay, maybe we do 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of revelation is the vehicle through which God gives you access beyond the veil of the flesh to see, to comprehend, and to encounter that which only exists by spiritual substance. But it is possible for you to come under the influence of the spirit of revelation, just like you had a dream. And that's the spirit of revelation. But it is possible for you to have a dream, and you cannot interpret it. Even though the dream is clear, you understand what you saw, but you see, the civilization from whence that communication came is superior to the frequency of human thought. And you will still need help from where that revelation came from in order for you to enter into the understanding of it. It is by the spirit of revelation that you have that dream. And it is by the spirit of wisdom that you can enter into the economy of communication that is trapped in the dream. Now, when Paul came and saw that the Christianity of the Ephesian believers was genuine, he went further to pray that God will take these believers beyond philosophy. He will take them by the spirit of revelation and the spirit of wisdom because that's the only avenue that we can enter into the revealed knowledge of Christ. See, the knowledge of Christ is the means by which God solves all of the believer's problems. The knowledge 
of Christ. That's God's formula for solving all of your problems. Just in case there is a problem that is on your life that you are finding it difficult to engage, to solve. It is a symptom of insufficiency. And God created us insufficient because he is expecting that the Spirit of God will help our infirmities. Are you there? You are not with me. You are not following. He is expecting that the Spirit of God will be the agency through which your infirmities will be helped, your insufficiencies will be helped. So it is it is a setup to ensure that you will always be in alignment with the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is present on earth to operate and to make active an administrative office that is domiciled in the heavenlies. The occupant of that office is Jesus and the name of the office is the office of the Christ. The Spirit of God therefore doesn't have the luxury of doing what he wants because he is here as a representative of an office to make that office efficacious to make that office alive now if god are you with me yes, sir. and administratively i don't want to open too many scriptures like first corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 i don't want to open too many scriptures but I think I need to open First Corinthians. The, the scriptures used to flash on this place before. Can you give me First Corinthians? Yeah. The, the Bible says here, but of him. Can you substitute him for the father? But of the father are ye in Christ Jesus. Are you there? Yes, sir. We are of the Father. But the Father has domiciled us in Christ Jesus. This is the habitat. This is the administrative context that God puts your life, your destiny. Uh, uh, it is in this context that your destiny will be managed and manipulated. Are you there? Yes, sir. You are not there. Amen. I, I need to test what you can what you can comprehend so that we don't get lost in talking. He, there is an administrative context that God put your life. He put your destiny. And that's where he's going to manage your life. And that's where he's going to manage your destiny and manipulate your destiny and your life until your life becomes exactly what he has written concerning you. So, there is only one way God will solve all of our problems. He's going to show you the equipment that is in this administrative office that he intends to use as a means to supply for your insufficiency that's so if you are going to prosper as a christian and achieve god's ordination as a christian part of what god does is that he gives you the knowledge of christ the knowledge of that administration so as to help you yield more to the operations of that administration in order for God to be able to establish his purpose in your life. So, that office can become anything that God wants it to be that will make up for your in insufficiency. If you read all through the Old Testament, you will hear things like, still go back, go back. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.30. We have not finished. Help, help me. Help. He said, Of the Father are ye in Christ Jesus. This is your administrative location. And whenever you see Christ before Jesus, he's talking about the office much more than the person. If you see Jesus Christ, he's talking about the person. Alright, so you were domiciled under the influence of the authority of this office. And God, the Father, are you see that? Has made whom God has made unto us righteousness, wisdom. It means that this office 
God can use it to supply anything you need. Because this, this list is not exhaustive. He can make it wisdom. He can make it righteousness. He can make it sanctification. He can make it redemption. He can make it, you know, the psalmist said, the Lord is my light. He can make it, the Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? This administrative position that you have been placed, God can use that administration to become anything that you need that will take care of your insufficiency. So Paul, when he was praying for the efficient church, the prayer that he made for the church was that God needs to give you guys the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation that facilitates the knowledge of this personality and his administration. As long as you do not have the knowledge of this personality, as long as you do not have the knowledge of the administration that the personality administers, you are going to experience perpetual insufficiencies and your incapacity will be so obvious that you will be short of what it takes to prosecute the counsel of God for your life. So Paul says, there is a desperate prayer point that I want to drop here. Paul says, I'm going to pray and I cease not to pray for you that the Lord God, the Father of glory, might give unto you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. This is a knowledge that you cannot stumble on in a library. It's a knowledge that is not a product of a search. It's a knowledge that is not a product of teaching. It's a knowledge that is revealed. It is handed out to you. And, and the moment you are armed with that knowledge, you will be able to adequately take advantage of the robust riches that are trapped in the administration that is being powered from the heavenlies. And all the symptoms of your insufficiency will be swallowed up by that administration. And you will be adequately funded to prosecute your calling and your purpose in God in spite of the availability and presence of Satan. That's what Paul said. Now, he said when the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the Lord is at work in your life, the experience of this two dimension of grace functioning in your life is that it will occasion the eyes of your understanding to be what? That means you, you will know things there are things that you will now know which are not things that you have learned. There are things that you will now know which are not things that you have been taught. There is an understanding that will come to you through that arrangement. Are you there? And you are going to gain entrance into the understanding of things that are beyond your cerebral capacity. He gave us a list of those things that there is no way you can know them except the eyes of your understanding being it, are enlightened. I'll give you three of them, then I will show you further things that Paul said and the reason why he said the things he said was still under the influence of understanding being enlightened. He gives us an outlook of this immortal status of a believer from the perspective of the unseen realm. He gave us an outlook. And all of that is in the book of Ephesians. For instance, are you with me? There's just one point I need to make this morning. Once I hit that point, then I am done. Paul says that when the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, you will now know the hope of your calling. <laughs> it will interest you to know that uh, 
the hope, the reason for which you were conscripted. Are you there? The reason why you were conscripted into an agenda. The reason why God is giving you grace to strive is because the calling that God has called you has a hope. There is something God intends to achieve for calling all of us. And that hope is God's eternal purpose. There is a purpose he wants to accomplish. There is no way you will know what God wants to accomplish in your calling except the eyes of your understanding is enlightened. Now, the knowledge that I speak of here is what Apostle Paul calls the excellency. This knowledge exceeds the civil engineering you learned in University of Lagos. Are you with me? I wanted to share a testimony, maybe to support what I'm teaching, but the Lord will not allow it. The hope of your calling Your calling is not an isolated initiative. It's, it's in conformity with a grand plan. It's a, it's, it's a maze of possibilities uh, that we are called to fulfill. And the objective is God's eternal purpose. I, I, and I, I don't have time to veer off into the catalog of that purpose. But you see, there is no way you can understand what God expects and intends to achieve by calling you out of darkness into his marvelous light if the eyes of your understanding are not enlightened. Secondly, the Bible says that it is also impossible for you to understand hmm. The what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the workings of his mighty power. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 is a collocation. It's a collocation of the six Greek words for power. In one verse, all the six Greek words for power are, are in that one verse, verse 19. You are not with me. I, I hope you are aware that there was a dimension of power that was manifested in bringing Jesus Christ back from the grave. That power that was manifested in bringing Jesus Christ back from the grave is superior to the power that was used in creation. No reference was made to the power of creation after creation. But once and again, you find God talking about the power that was exercised in raising Jesus Christ from the dead, by which God spoiled all principality and power. That power are you with me? Yes, <laughs> that power happens to be the same power that is domiciled in your spirit. That is a spiritual capital that is supposed to drive your Christian life. That power was able to overcome death and reverse reverse the handiwork of death and brought a man out of Hades the place of departed spirits and brought that man bodily back into physical existence in so much that he this no longer has power over him that same power now listen to me is the just i would prefer if you understand more than clap my objective is understanding that power that accomplished this is the same power 
that is the operating system of your Christian life. So, meanwhile, it is possible for you to have that power at work in your life and you are still a victim of devils, demons, reproach, curses, all kinds of encumbrances. And the reason why it will be so is because the eyes of your understanding has not yet been enlightened to know this power. To know this power. Because if you know this power, now God used this power to solve man's greatest problem, which is death. It means the problem of poverty can be solved by the same power. Poverty is not as, as terrible as death. It's solved death. It is the same power. Are you there? It did not, that power did not only raise Jesus Christ from the dead, according to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. He raised him from the dead and he transported him into heaven and he domiciled him in his administrative seat, in his, the, the seat of his office in the heavens. That power put him there. And it is that power that is making that office efficacious even now. That same power. And that power is the power that you have deposited in your spirit. So if there is any form of hindrance in your life that you have acknowledged, the reason why the hindrance is there is because you don't know the, the chemistry of that power and how to release it. Because your life, according to spiritual capital, is not supposed to be caught up in the prison houses of, 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 of darkness in any shade, in any form or fashion whatsoever. Just in case that may be the situation, it is because the eyes of your understanding has not yet been enlightened to know this power. Six words, Greek words for power, all the words for power were used in one path in an attempt to describe the power that we are talking about. Now, now let me show you. And you can research yourself. Hallelujah. And what is the exceeding? No, wait. Let me be giving you exceeding. That's hupabolo. Hupabolo. Uh, um, it's, it's, uh, it's going beyond the mark. If we can get a value for witchcraft power. Are you there? You are not following me. If we can say, okay, if we accumulate all witchcraft power, this is the this is the value, this is the measurement. Kupabolo means this power we are talking about goes beyond it. This is that is that correct? Second word, greatness there is megathos, which means unmeasurable. Um, the word power there is the traditional word dunamis. And dunamis has two meanings. One is potential energy and the other one is inherent energy. Are you there? Inherent. You know what inherent means? Oh, you are not with me. What I'm attempting to do is to give you an opportunity to see a vision. If this service does not end in your seeing a vision, you did not come to church today. The things that I'm speaking about are not things that are cerebral. You will need an insight that will be occasioned by the spirit of wisdom and revelation in order for you to see what I'm talking about. It needs to come to you not as education. It needs to come to you as revelation. You must see it. So what I'm doing is that I'm troubling the waters of your spirit so that you can see. The moment you see it with the eyes of your understanding, you are passed from defeat into victory. And that will be the fulfillment of the prayer of Paul. Are you still with me? Yes, Stay with me. Stay with me. Dunamis means inherent energy. Inherent. Now, and I need to... Um, this is your phone. Uh, what's the operating system of this phone? 
is Android. Is this a Samsung? What? What kind of phone is it? Infinix. Techno. Techno. All right. So, Pastor here has a Techno phone. And the operating system for Techno is Android. And the place to get applications that run on Android is Play Store. Now, if we go, if we, through the internet, if we go to Play Store, and we find your desired application. All right? We click on it. I like this. And then the company will now show you their terms and conditions for using their product. And normally we don't read it. But we just accept it. Thank God that's not how the mark of the beast will, will come. Just accept it. And then it begins to download. The moment it downloads, it becomes inherent with your phone. You don't need to take permission from the company to use the application because it's one with your phone right now. Do you understand that? That's what it means to be inherent. That's how dunamis. That's the meaning of dunamis. You can now use it at will. You, you don't need to use it with permission because it's part and parcel of your phone. Good. The Bible says you shall receive dunamis. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now, it means that the energy that God will release from heaven, it will be downloaded into your spirit, man. It will become inherent with your spirit. Are you there? It means that you don't need to go to heaven to take permission for usage. Usage is according to your will. First Corinthians chapter 14. The Bible reveals that the only gift of the spirit that, that you can operate at will is your, the ability to speak in tongues. Because that gift is now dunamis, it's now inherent, it is up to you to use, it's no longer up to God to you. So, the extent to which you use that inherent ability will determine your spiritual capacity. It is no longer up to God. If you say, okay, you pray in tongues for 30 minutes a day, what God will do is that he will harmonize your life and give you energy that is commensurate to 30 minutes prayer. That's the level of civilization that you are going to sustain. If you say you want, it's inherent. It's no longer God's business on how it is used. It is your business on how you put it to work. If you say you want to pray two hours every day in time, your life will come into a mode of operation, a mode of possibility that is according to that investment. Because that energy is what? It's inherent. It's inherent. I remember those days when we used to pray. Every Saturday we pray from 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. Oh, there's this guy. That guy that you said the prophesied. That guy. I don't want to. The, uh, that I said he, he can't prophesy. He's not. He can't prophesy. Because you know why? I know him. Those prayer meetings, you, 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 can't, you can't wake up from your sleep and then stand up on the pulpit and say, Don't say the Lord. That's not how it works. We were together there. We should pray from 8 o'clock to 4 p.m. That guy will always come for the prayer by 8. But he will leave by 8.30. He, for two years straight, that was what he did. Two years straight. Today, he said he prophesied. Watch it. <laughs> so, I have to tell him, please, don't take him seriously. <laughs> he, he, he's marketing. He's marketing. There were people developing capacity those days. Capacity, capacity, capacity. He would just come and then you he, he, and he comes with a guitar. Before you know, he has escaped. He doesn't stay more than thirty minutes. All of us are pastors today, and part of the reason why some of them are under pressure to prophesy because they see me. Yeah, if he's doing it. We cannot. We are not, I'm not doing anything. There is an inherent capacity that has been developed over the years, more than 27 years. So, there is a civilization that that investment has produced. Because dunamis means what? It's not up to God. God made it inherent so that, so that you will be responsible for usage. 
He made it user friendly so that you will determine how much of deployment you give into it, how much of investment you make. The ability to pick the voice of God is in that inherent energy. Are you still with me? And the second meaning of dunamis is uh, potential energy. Uh, I know most of you here know um, crude oil. You know crude oil? No crude oil. Crude oil is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. But it's not useful in its crude state. But it's a compendium of potential. Compendium of value. The potential of crude oil will be realized when you take it through a fractional distillation column called the refinery. And then the useful fractions are going to fractionate at various temperatures. Are you there? The moment you begin to increase the heat in the refinery, the first thing that comes out are gases. Your cooking gas will come out and they'll trap it. Then the heating gas will come out, the type that they used to heat places in Europe to come out, they'll trap it. Then all other heavier gases will come out. Then the first liquid product that comes out is aviation turbine kerosene that is used to power jet engines. Then, then household kero, the one they use for your stove. After that, the next product that comes out is premium motor spirit, which you call petrol. And there are two streams of it. The pure one, which is the first one that comes out, is the super. The, the one that has, uh, the parameters are not too good, is what we call regular. That's the one we sell in Nigeria. Because if your car is 2018 and above, you should be using super. But we don't have that differentiation. It's only one that we have. The Lord will help us. Yeah. After premium motor spirit, then you have automotive gas oil, which you call this. It's heavier than PMS. After that, you have other liquid products which we don't use here. Then the solid products will begin to come like bitumen, like asphalt for making of it means are you there? Yes, the more you run the refinery, the heavier the products you get. Many of us here, when you pray in tongues, the product you produce is gas. That's why it doesn't have the weight to displace demonic entities around you. It's gas. It's the product. Is gas that your 30 minutes prayer produces gas, gas that can choke. That's what they produce. By the time you begin to use, so someone that is producing gas is saying he wants to prophesy for to a nation. So that's where I find is that okay, oh, the prophecy is already out. Wait for it. But me, I already know that it will not come to pass. I know <laughs> you can't prophesy to a nation from gas. It's potential energy. The only ghost in your spirit is not, is not, okay, just like Jesus was in a boat and he slept. The only ghost can be in your spirit and sleep. And it's not useful to you. Except you, you switch on your refiner. When you switch on your refiner, then the complex mixture begins to produce products. We were not all like this. We couldn't hear God before. But we started running the refinery and then the capacity strange capacity that were not born with began to find expression and it's getting better by the day it's increasing by the day it is it is both potential and what inherent paul said it in this scripture but the eyes of the understanding must be enlightened to see that god has given you everything that it takes to fulfill destiny to succeed in life, to become everything he has ordained you to be in terms of the power resources that are located in your spirit. But if your the eyes of your understanding are not enlightened, it won't translate to anything that will satisfy the desire of the heart of God. Now, you see the burden that Paul is praying with? Oh, you are not with me. Okay, let me leave you. Let me leave you. 
You see, the thing about it's not by force. You see, when we are, is you can you are you can desire your life in the wilderness the way it is like that. You, no problem. It's not that it will not change. I know how it will change. It will change by these resources I'm showing you. Because God has no other way to deal with you. Other than the pathway that he has established. It is for you to discover how you operate and align to it. If you like, sit where you are expecting God to break his word. To come and reach you. You will be there for a long time. You will be there for a very long time. The next word you use there is the word iskus. Iskus is a comparative word for power. It's a kind of word, the word that was used concerning the woman with the issue of blood. You know, the Bible says that she had consulted with physicians and instead of her situation becoming better, it grew worse. Right? So there's the common ground for comparison. And then she touched the hem of Jesus' garment and virtue flowed out. Virtue, iskus, flowed out. It means what flowed out comparatively was higher in value, higher in description, higher in capacity than all the other measures that were taken to help the woman in her condition. The iskus component is still part of the power that we are talking about. So Paul had to deploy the six words for power in explaining our spiritual capacity base, which is what God has put in place to ensure that your insufficiency is swallowed up and you have sufficiency in God that is much needed to assist you to fulfill the plan of God for you. Are you still with me? All right. Let me leave the power matter. He said this power was rough in Christ when he was raised from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Are you still with me? It's still by the instrumentality of the spirit of wisdom and revelation that this man is giving us insight into the current place where Jesus is. His location now is in the heavenlies. And uh, the description of the location is that he is managing a throne, an office at the moment. Are you there? Now, we don't have so much time. I would have shown you the layout of heaven and how heaven works. Principles that power. What makes heaven heaven? There are 12 things. God in this age has given us the opportunity to taste of those 12 things. So that when you transit into that civilization, it will not be new to you, completely new. They are, oh man. Okay, forget about that. Forget about that. Let's just stay with the Bible. He said the place where Jesus is seated right now is far above principalities and powers. How did he know that? Because the eyes of his understanding. This is knowledge that was not that is not in the classroom. That this man is downloading. He's just downloading it. And the 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 the, the frequency of download and and the fluency of delivery shows you that this guy is plugged into something that is beyond human knowledge. He goes to the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Then he begins to speak about you as a believer. Now everything he speaks about in the closing verses of chapter 1 is about Jesus. The current status of Jesus in the heavenlies and his heavenly ministry. 
All right. Now, uh, and his heavenly ministry, that's a big, that's a big deal. It's a big, it's a big island in itself. So after revealing that Jesus is seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, then in verse 2, he begins to speak about us. And the reason why he's speaking about us is so that we can see into the heaven. Because the eyes of his understanding, they are seeing light. He is now using that privilege that he has, the privilege of penetration, to give you an insight into your reality. Those of you that have partaken of the deliverance ministry before, right? If you don't have the authority to speak and challenge the spiritual reality that is behind someone's bondage, then it means you do not have the capacity to end the bondage. When we talk about releasing men from bondage, we're talking about authority to speak into the context from whence the bondage came from. The bondage might have its roots in, in the water, for instance. If your authority cannot enter into that place, that domain, that place, that water, and defeat what is responsible for this bondage here, there is no way this bondage will be affected by what you are doing. Are you see with me? Paul goes further to reveal to us where our own reality is. And he reveals that our reality is in the heavens. In fact, he reveals that what God did. Uh, stay with me. Um, where is the technical man here? I think we need a scripture because I'm about to round up. Go to 2 verse 1. 2 verse 1. Quickly. He said, and you. He has finished talking about Jesus. Talking about his heavenly ministry. Talk, talking about his administration. Talking about where he's operating from. Now in chapter 2. He begins to talk about you. He said, you has he quickened. Who were dead in trespasses and sins. Next verse. Quickened. That word quickened. Do you still remember that word? He said it is the spirit that quickens. There, there is there's division of labor in the Godhead. There's division of labor. All quickening necessities have been given to the spirit as his duty. But but stay with me. You have it quickened wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. We were doing a Bible study some time ago. Go back there. Go back there. Go back there. Two. We we're doing some Bible study some time ago and we were talking about uh Man and spirits. Man and spirits. And then we have to come to this scripture. That our unbeliever does not know that he is being manipulated by a personality that his physical senses cannot design. That there is no man was designed to be manipulated by spirits. It says. The spirit himself help it. I found it. There is an allocation even in the new covenant for you to receive help from a spirit perpetually. That is the reason why you were created with weaknesses. So that you will not source for your sufficiency in yourself. And like the psalmist, you'll be able to say, we will look onto the hills. You will look yonder. For help because you know that in yourself and by yourself you are insufficient. Are you there? All right. All right. So even if the unbeliever doesn't know, he's a victim of the manipulation of the prince of the power there. And uh, it is the spirit that walks in the children of the disobedient. Next verse. Next verse quickly. He say, Among whom also we had our conversation in times past. This was the expression 
of the influence of the spirit, lust of the flesh, and then fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, making us, constituting us by nature, children that were only good for judgment. Next one. Next one. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, when we, he loved us, when a situation that we could not help ourselves, so an act of God's love, he brought intervention. Go on, go on, go on, quickly, quickly. Even when we were dead in sin, he has quickened us together with Christ. Go on. And has raised us up together and made us to sit with in where? In heavenly places. You know, I told you when we read Psalms 1 verse 1. But a blessed man has three postures. He has a sitting posture. Has a standing posture. Has a walking posture. And I told you that that's the summary of the book of Ephesians. Paul is saying this by because the eyes of his understanding are still enlightened. And he's telling us that when we were brought into the kingdom of God, after our salvation, and we featured in God's realm, the first position that God applied us to was sitting. Now, all of you, most of you, except the ushers and the media people, are sitting. And your experience in sitting is that your weight is transferred to the chair. And your legs are free of pressure. Is that true? Okay. Hallelujah. How many of you still remember the creation in the book of Genesis? That man was created on the sixth day. Is that true? Every other thing that we support him was already existing before he was created. And he was created on the sixth day and then the next day, the seventh day was public holiday. Think about it. I want you to think about it. Because that guy was created into rest, not was created into rest. The things that make for his support were already made available in the room before the guy was introduced. And that's the same thing with you. The Bible said God has blessed us with already with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm before he now introduced you into the realm. Are you there? Yes, sir. Now, your preoccupation is not to attempt to do something because we are Stay with me. Just stay. The flesh likes to walk. The flesh like act, likes activity. The flesh likes to be in that position where it is saying, I'm the one powering this thing. And because God wants to take glory, you must have discovered that in the New Testament, there's no provision for any man to boast. The reason is because God is the one that makes everything happen there. So, you see, someone that is used to the flesh will not understand the arrangement in that place. That the flesh is excluded so that no man can boast. The first thing that God admits you into when you are brought into the kingdom is that your weight is transferred. The realm is buoyant enough to carry your weight. But you need to know how to take advantage of the existing infrastructure. I need to because the idea this morning is that you must know what it means to sit. I see many believers, they have not perfected sitting. All right? Then they want to start walking. And because of the fact that our educational system, the body of Christ, is not holistic. 
we have churches that are sitting we have churches that are working we have churches that are standing meanwhile these three things are the descriptions of what the blessed man it's not an they are not isolated possibilities but each aspect of these realities are supposed to be found in your life so in the past past 40 years thorough apostolic discipleship has not been done in the church in nigeria and what that means is the opportunity for the eyes of the understanding of the believers to be enlightened is not available so you are going to find all shades of the rainbow and the manipulation of the devil is going to be strong among us so the moment you were admitted into the realm what god did was that he made you see you know why because in the room the room is already furnished so now you will need to make a research of the things that are existing because consider adam in that garden are you there the guy maybe there's a part of the garden where there are waver trees he doesn't know maybe for two years he was starved of waver he doesn't know there's anything like that and that's the reason why he doesn't have access to it until two years later i now strayed it's another type of food the first labor if you are in a sitting position the first labor you will need to do is a labor of discovery not activity discovery you need to know what what is already available because the finished works of jesus has has translated to currency in the spirit that is usable what's the difference between bitcoin and money <laughs> huh? bitcoin bitcoin is not legal tender in nigeria but people transact with Bitcoin that are Nigerians. Bitcoin is currency. Naira is money. Stay with me now. Stay with me. Oh, let me leave you. Let me leave you. Yeah. <laughs> See, if you, I was in the village. It's in the village I studied the Bible. Do you understand? In the village. And God blessed me with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Right there in the village. The eyes of my understanding. Was in my and I began to walk in. I began to walk in. My pastor was preaching prosperity. But when my eyes of understanding were enlightened, do you understand? I began to walk in what my pastor was not teaching and practicing. My eyes were opening to things and I discovered that, oh, God also made this available. That's what a sitting man does. He, he goes on a discovery rampage. Have you read now the book of Isaiah chapter 53? He said he was wounded. For what? So his wounds translated to currency. Do you understand that? There is currency in the room. You can use it to, to pay for things. Transaction. He was bruised. It translated to currency. The chastisement of our peace. It was translated to chorus so that means we have we have right to peace because chastisement was upon him. the bible says with his stripes we have a right to to him because no matter how good the commodity is you don't pay for it twice so 
As a sitting man, what you need is the knowledge of what is within your estate. Because that is already furnished. And walk in the light of that knowledge. You will see there is no gate that will not open to you. No gate. I, I was trying to make you understand how disadvantaged I was, was as a human being. In the village, somewhere in Kogiste. Then the eyes of my understanding he opened up. It opened up. It opened up. And I began to walk in it. That my pastor in the village is, it, he is one of the most intelligent preachers from my tribe. So he's, he's, that is, is the star. But it was not him that taught me this matter. What I'm teaching you today, the eyes of my understanding was what? Do you see that you and the Holy Ghost, the mileage that you can gain just with the Holy Ghost alone is massive. That my pastor is in Zambia now. You now told me one day that, are you aware that I, I follow you? That was humbling because that guy is a guy. We have good preachers, we have great preachers, but the fact that you have a great preacher over you doesn't mean that you will not hear Jesus. He needs to open the eyes of your understanding and take you on a tour through your new garden. If you go on that tour, you might find out that the thing that you are afraid of for the past 12 years actually is afraid of you. But he knows that you don't know. So he's still there. I went on a tour. When I analyzed my family, I saw that they don't live long. So in my tour, I found out that there's long life. It's available there. Yes. So I went and appropriated it. We are still here now. You will see that I will live long. <laughs> not by power. You are getting it wrong. Oh, not by might. Not by might. But by the Spirit of God. Yes, yeah, some of you are beginning to see. That's the first thing that God does to a man that he wants to help. He shows him something that is outside of the allowance of his circumstances. That's the first thing you He shows you something that doesn't look like your circumstances. And then the, the conflict of conviction and faith starts. Then when the devil wants to overwhelm you with more problems so that you will drown and accept that your circumstances are your reality. He will show you another one. Like in the poverty of that village, God showed me that I was the preacher to the nations. How do you? It, it, it was sacred. In fact, I told my, the, the, my friends in our prayer group that what I'm seeing now, it seems I'm going to preach in nations. I lost those friends. Because it was an abomination for you to think that anything positive could come out of the circumstances that we found ourselves. I lost them. I lost them. But you know what? He showed me again and again and again until my mind was renewed to accept that reality. The moment your mind is recalibrated to accept that reality, Satan can no longer take it away. They can take away your coat of many colors. But there is something they can never take away. The moment your mind is recalibrated to accept it, that this is my reality. It's just like a lion. A lion will see an elephant. What he sees there is food. You are seeing an elephant, you are running away. What the lion is seeing is food. And that's why the lion is likely to bring the elephant down. He sees food. The moment your mind is renewed to accommodate a spiritual reality, the idea of God, your response will be according to your, the renewed mind.
Do you understand me? Yes. So I knew I was going to preach in the nations of the world, even though I was in the village. The first thing I started doing was to study the Bible, not according to um, the doctrines that were reigning locally in Nigeria, locally in my village. I, I wanted to know what body was on Apostle Paul's heart. I wanted to be a Bible teacher that was universal, not just this Nigerian gospel of breakthrough. You can only preach it in Nigeria. Take it to Europe. You will find out that we are just dancing without music. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we have gathered tight tools without any substance. People are saying, Father in the Lord, Father in the Lord, without any download from heaven. Are you, still, are you, are you, are you there? I want to pray today the same prayer that Paul prays for the believers. That the eyes of your understanding will be on Many years later, my mother was now in the hall when I was teaching the Bible. After that experience, she could not sleep that night. In the morning, she came to me and said, my son, who taught you? Because my mother was the one that, you know, she she came from a Muslim background, so she was very enthusiastic about her Christian faith. My father was from a Christian lineage, so he, he was taking things easy. My mother was a radical. So almost all our commitment to scripture was powered by my mother's zeal. So the one responsible for putting the pressure now Sat and who? Oh, where did you? How did you arrive? What happened to you? Then I told her I met another teacher. Hey, hey. who is this teacher? His name is the Holy Ghost. By whose strength the eyes of my understanding. Let us pray. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters today in the same voice as your servant Apostle Paul that you might grant unto everyone here the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of you that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can you just take a moment to soak in these words? Just a moment to soak in these words. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That the Lord will flood the eyes of your spirit with light. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Because all things are ours. And by this light, we don't only gain access. Having me here. Please, you may be seated.